Welcome to our series, Questions and Answers for a World in Crisis. As many of you are now aware, we receive a number of questions on various topics from students who must face difficulties in their young lives. There is nothing better than to read the words of Sri Aurobindo and the Mother. This series, averaging some 10 to 15 minutes, is to highlight some of the answers, but we suggest to all that the best way is to begin to read their writings. Our website, motherandshriarbindo.in, has all their books, and one is able to search across all to find answers to their questions in detail. Today, the topic is patience. The mother. Patience is one of the most essential conditions of the spiritual life. One must know how to wait in order to receive. 23rd December 1935. Patience, indispensable for all realization. Patience, the capacity to wait steadily for the realization to come. With patience, one arrives always. It is not in a day that one can overcome one's own nature, but with patience and enduring will, the victory is sure to come. With patience, any difficulty can be overcome. 9 March 1934. Everything will come in its time. Keep a confident patience and all will be all right. 9th August 1934. With patience and perseverance, all prayers get fulfilled. 4th February 1938. With sincerity, make an effort for progress. And with patience, know how to await the result of your effort. 21st October 1951. If the mind remains quiet in all circumstances and happenings, patience will be more easily increased. To realize anything, one must be patient. And the vaster and more important the realization, the greater the patience must be. Blessings, 19 May. 1968. It is very encouraging indeed because the only thing necessary is to will and to have patience. What for you is incomprehensible today will be quite clear after a time. The remedy? It is always the same. Goodwill, sincerity, clear sight, patience. Yes, a patience untiring and a perseverance which enables you to be convinced that what you have not succeeded in doing one day, you will succeed another time, and you will continue to try until you have succeeded. Criticism is seldom useful. It discourages more than it helps. And all goodwill deserves encouragement, for with patience and endurance there is no progress which cannot be made. You must arm yourself with an endless patience and endurance. You do a thing once, ten times, a hundred times, a thousand times, if necessary, but you do it till it gets done. And not done only here and there, but everywhere, 
and everywhere at the same time. This is the great problem one sets oneself. That is why, to those who come to tell me very light-heartedly, I want to do yoga. I reply, think it over. One may do the yoga for a number of years without noticing the least result. But if you want to do it, you must persist and persist with such a will that you should be ready to do it for ten lifetimes, a hundred lifetimes, if necessary, in order to succeed. I do not say it will be like that, but the attitude must be like that. Nothing must discourage you, for there are all the difficulties of ignorance, of the different states of being, to which are added the endless malice and the unbounded cunning of the hostile forces in the world. They are there. Do you know why? They have been tolerated. Do you know why? Simply to see how long one can last out and how great is the sincerity in one's action. For everything depends upon your sincerity. If you are truly sincere in your will, nothing will stop you. You will go right to the end, and if it is necessary for you to live a thousand years to do it, you will live a thousand years to do it. Sri Aurobindo, when one enters into the true yogic consciousness, then you see that everything can be done, even if at present only a slight beginning has been made. But a beginning is enough, since the force, the power are there. It is not really on the capacity of the outer nature that success depends. For the outer nature, all self-exceeding seems impossibly difficult. But on the inner being, and to the inner being, all is possible. One has only to get into contact with the inner being and change the outer view and consciousness from the inner. That is the work of the sadhana, and it is sure to come with sincerity, aspiration, and patience. It takes a long time to spiritualize the whole nature, and until that is done, variations must come. A constant trust and patience must be cultivated, must be acquired, not least when things go against. For when they are favorable, trust and patience are easy. All who enter the spiritual path have to face the difficulties and ordeals of the path. Those which rise from their own nature and those which come in from outside. The difficulties in the nature always rise again and again till you have overcome them. They must be faced with both strength and patience. In yoga, the one thing that counts in the end is sincerity, and with it, the patience to persist in the path. Many even without this patience go through. For in spite of revolt, impatience, depression, despondency, fatigue, temporary loss of faith, a force greater than one's outer self, the force of the spirit, the drive of the soul's need, pushes them through the cloud and the mist to the goal before them. Imperfections can be stumbling blocks and give one a bad fall for the moment. 
but not a permanent bar. Obscurations due to some resistance in the nature can be more serious causes of delay, but they too do not last forever. In all yoga, the first requisites are faith and patience. The ardors of the heart and the violences of the eager will that seek to take the kingdom of heaven by storm can have miserable reactions if they disdain to support their vehemence on these humbler and quieter auxiliaries. And in the long and difficult integral yoga, there must be an integral faith and an unshakable patience.